Welcome to our video about deep fungal infection. Deep fungal infection, causes, diagnosis, and prevention. Understanding the causes and treatment options for deep fungal infections is important for ensuring a successful outcome. This article will address the symptoms, diagnose the fungus, and offer preventative measures to prevent the recurrence of the infection. If you have a fungal infection, you should follow these steps. If you are unsure about your diagnosis, please consult with a physician. You may have to repeat certain tests before finding out that you have a fungal infection. Treatment Deep fungal infections may affect the mucosa, subcutaneous tissues, or internal organs. They may be limited to a single organ or systemic. They are an opportunistic, life-threatening infection. Patients with immunosuppression, AIDS, organ transplantation, or age are at risk for developing deep fungal infections. This article summarizes the basic facts about deep fungal infections. It does not cover every aspect of treatment or prevention. The prevalence of deep fungal infections has been increasing over the past five years at Kuen Young Medical University. The authors cite previous literature regarding the increased incidence of deep fungal infections as a possible cause. The researchers also point to the increasing use of antibiotics and immunosuppressants as contributors to the increased incidence. Further, they note that the use of indwelling catheters may contribute to the rising incidence of deep fungal infections. New antifungal agents are being investigated for their efficacy and safety, but there is still little consensus regarding the best therapy. Efficacy and cost are key criteria for selection. As a result, the MSKCC uses guidelines to determine which antifungal agent to use for the treatment of deep fungal infections. There is no standard therapy for treating a deep fungal infection, so doctors must carefully evaluate the patient's case and determine if antifungals are appropriate. Home remedies for fungal infection can be highly effective in reducing the symptoms of the condition. While some antifungal creams can effectively treat superficial fungal infections, more advanced cases may require oral antifungal medicines. Despite the popularity of home remedies for fungal infections, it is important to consult with a doctor and use the right medication. These remedies can be effective in curing and preventing fungus. If you have noticed lesions that do not respond to home remedies, you should see a medical professional immediately. While these lesions may be self-limiting, they likely indicate a more serious underlying infection. Some deep fungal infections can be fatal, particularly mucormycosis or aspergillosis. They can destroy the maxilla and can cause oronasal insufficiency, orbital invasion, or even blindness. Conjida infections are caused by impaired epithelial barrier functions. Topical antifungal therapy for candidiasis can treat the infection, but prophylaxis is often necessary to prevent recurrence. Deep fungal infection treatment includes antifungal medications that can be applied directly to the infected area, including the mucosa. These treatments can relieve symptoms but may have side effects. Some people may experience post-traumatic stress disorder or organ dysfunction. In addition to antifungal medications, you should avoid walking barefoot in public places. Public areas are full of fungal spores. Poor blood circulation can hinder your immune response, which weakens your body's ability to fight off the infection. Hormonal changes in postmenopausal women can lower the acidity of the vagina, leaving them more susceptible to vaginal yeast infections. If you suffer from any of these conditions, you should seek treatment as soon as possible. Diagnosis The most common cause of deep fungal infections is candidiasis, a fungus found in the skin and mucous membranes. While candidiasis is a common occurrence in humans, it is considered benign because it typically remains in a colonization state. During a fungal infection, however, it can become a serious problem. To help diagnose this condition, a physician must first determine the underlying disease. The incidence of invasive fungal infections is rising every year and is a serious medical challenge. These infections can be mistaken for pneumonia, bronchitis, or even tuberculosis. They are particularly dangerous for people with compromised immune systems and are often misdiagnosed as such. It is essential to see your doctor immediately if you suspect that you have a fungal infection. Diagnosis of deep fungal infections is crucial to the treatment and management of this infection. The incidence of deep fungal infections is increasing in the United States and is peaking in 2018 and 2019. As a result, this type of infection is becoming more common. 
According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 1,047,422 people died from fungal infections in 2018. The Kuen Young Medical University study is consistent with previous literature. The authors suggest that increased use of immunosuppressants and antibiotics may contribute to the increase in the incidence of deep fungal infections. Additionally, increased use of indwelling catheters may also be a factor. For a correct diagnosis, a doctor may use a combination of laboratory tests and clinical observations. Blood tests and skin samples may cause minor soreness or bleeding. Fortunately, these complications generally go away with time. Diagnosis of deep fungal infection requires a combination of these procedures and may involve several different diagnostic tests. In the case of deep fungal infections, it is important to identify the underlying cause as early as possible. Currently, invasive fungal infections are an increasing threat to human health, so it is vital to develop an accurate diagnostic test to identify them. The serum, 1,3 BD glucanase was the most commonly used test for the detection of this disease in autopsy cases. The researchers found that patients with a diagnosis of invasive fungal infection also had an underlying disease such as leukemia. A number of autopsy studies conducted in recent decades have suggested that the incidence of deep fungal infection has increased in some regions. A number of groups from Asia, Europe, and Brazil conducted a study of autopsies to evaluate the disease in these countries. Although the number of autopsies performed worldwide has declined, a minimally invasive autopsy should be considered a viable alternative for identifying the disease. For this study, the most commonly involved single organ was the brain. In four cases, fungal infection was not identified via culture, indicating that a biopsy is necessary to make an accurate diagnosis. In the present study, the brain was the most common single organ in which the patient developed this infection. In the present study, Conjida SPP and Rotatoriola SPP were found in a submandibular abscess, but no other fungi were identified. Prevention of recurrence While there are several OTC treatments for fungal infections, it is important to seek professional medical care. Although most fungal infections can be treated with OTC products, severe cases may require prescription treatment. In such cases, it may be necessary to remove the infected toenail, but you can use an antifungal cream or powder on the nail and bottom of your foot to prevent a recurrence. Although only 300 species of fungi cause infections in humans, several different types can affect the skin. While some fungal infections are minor and cause only slight irritation, others can become serious and lead to a rash or blisters. In many cases, a fungi infection can also spread from one person to another via direct contact. This contact may occur through sweat or clothing that has fungi on it. Despite the many antifungal medications available, oral fluconazole is the most effective therapy. Adult patients can eliminate the fungus with one 200 mg dose. Depending on the severity of the infection, the treatment may need to be repeated every three months or for a year, depending on the severity of recurrence. If small spots are present, an over-the-counter Lotrimin cream can be applied. Some medications may increase the risk of fungal infection. While it is generally safe to ingest fungal spores and breath in the air, individuals with weakened immune systems are at risk of developing a fungal infection. As an example, immunosuppressive drugs can reduce the body's ability to fight infections. Other weakened immune systems are prone to fungal infections, including those with weak immune systems. Antifungal drugs that target the fungus causing an infection are a good option. There are several antifungal drugs available for oral consumption and intravenous administration. Despite the lack of evidence, it is generally considered advisable to use antifungal drugs until a satisfactory clinical response is achieved. If the infection does recur, an alternative antifungal medication or surgical removal of the primary fungal focus may be required. To avoid the recurrence of deep fungal infections, it is important to see your healthcare provider for a diagnosis. Avoid using antifungal creams containing steroid ingredients, as they can make the fungal rash worse and more difficult to treat. Avoid wearing plastic shoes and walking barefoot in moist areas. Your healthcare provider will recommend the right treatment for your condition. If the symptoms do not improve after treatment, a doctor may suggest a course of oral medication. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if this was helpful.